Is C++ worth learning in 2022? Where you reach the right video, let me explain. This video is brought to you by Digilink Academy, your number one source to learning programming fast and get to that six figure freelance salary you desire. Our courses include our SQL project course, our freelance Kickstarter, our Python course, and our interview programming course, and much, much more. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click the link below to get to our free seven step freelance guide so that we can help take your career to the next level. I'll see you guys in the course. All right, guys, a lot of you guys are wondering, should I learn C++? Maybe you start in college or a boot camp or even self-taught, you see C++ is one of the top programming languages. Hey, Rod, should I learn C++? And depending on your situation, we get into some of these uh, scenarios um, later in the video. But what I want you guys to do is, what's some of the programming languages that you started off with um, before C++? Or have you started off with C++ as your first programming language? Comment below as far as just your experience. And also comment about the experience with C++ learning it. Is this a struggle? Is it working? Is it something that you think is important? Go ahead and comment. I want to start a conversation below, guys, so I can get that dialogue in the uh, comment section and start that conversation. So. Short answer, guys. Uh, yes, C++ is a good language to still learn in 2022, depending on your situation. If you're just looking at it from a job market perspective, uh, there's a lot of applications that are written in C++. There's a lot of legacy code that need to be supported by C++ developers. So you're in the money there and you can go on any job market website, type in C++ developer, and you're gonna find jobs. So the question is, why is learning C++ either right for you or wrong for you? And that's why I wanna clarify that most uh, uh, videos don't do. I wanna clarify that. So let's start with the, uh, let's start with a yes side first, guys. As far as just yes, why should you learn C++? Again, I already went over to some of the things. Large market share with legacy code, all that good stuff. Uh, very performance driven applicate, uh, programming language, guys. If you're looking for massive, massive, massive performance um, from like an OS level, something like that, you got an engine or something like that in your car as far as just the uh, OS in your car, things like that, core, core, core software platforms that other applications run on, normally that meets the realm of C or C++. So any of those projects is gonna be good for you high performance applications. Um, some of the ones that I think of, uh, MySQL, uh, Microsoft Office, uh, Microsoft uh, <laughs> uh, OS, Windows 98 and all that is written in some portions of C, C++. Uh, Adobe, I think, is written in C++. And um, just a lot of things. What all of them have in common? Need high, high, high performance, guys. High, high, high performance. Also, some of the gaming engines. That's another area that need high performance as well. Um, some of the Call of Duty, uh, Assassin's Creed, a lot of other games are built in the actual C++ realm at some point in time, especially early on. So, what's on the no side of the thing? All right, so if you're in a market that needs a lot of just standard desktop applications, standard applications that performance is not the actual top um, top um, item on your list, then it may not be. Um, and a lot of may, a lot of you guys may think, right, I want my application to perform at a high level. But the difference between how many users you're gonna be using this and what type of application you're gonna be building. Performance for three users, performance versus a million users and application supporting, those are two different levels of performance. Most application nowadays may not necessarily need that power of C or C++. Um, you got stuff like PHP, um, Python, um, C, uh, C Sharp, Java, that gives you a performance for that particular application, but the thing it brings to the table that C++ don't is the easeability of deploying that code. Writing speed, speed of writing is a lot faster with the other ones as well. So you got a balance between writing speed 
or processing speed. And most application may not necessarily need the power of a C or a C++ because you gotta write so much code to get it and maintain it. It's, it's a little bit hard, guys. So you start to get into the standard desktop apps, Hello World, things like that, training, stuff like that, it start to put C++ on the no side of the column. So kind of keep that in mind. But again, if you already learned C++, your local market support it, how do you know your local market support it? You probably haven't took my seven step guide because we cover that as a main option. Go ahead in the description, sign up for my seven step guide. And if you already signed up for my seven step guide, go get that 30 day web development course. We go into that in detail and check out some of the stuff in the description box and support the channel, get some of the premium courses, guys. So. Um, so we covered the yes side, uh, we covered some of the no side. At the end of the day, there's other applications out there that you can write way faster code with C++, guys. C++, um, learning is another one. Um, first starting out, um, I wouldn't recommend that be the first language that you learn. It was one of the first languages that I, I think it was second one. First was COBOL and the other one was uh, C++, but that was back in the, <laughs> that was a long time ago, guys. Now I would personally start with Python. Um, some kind of database language, JavaScript, uh, PHP, from a learning, pure learning perspective. And once you do your market research, you find out that there's job that's needing C++ development. You have that underlining knowledge of programming with the uh, uh, Pythons and the uh, PHPs, and you know how to develop little standard desktop applications. Then you can go up a level to get to the C++ is because normally when you're doing a C++, you're working with platforms and, op and operating systems at that point. Um, car navigation, operating systems, some, some major project that requires a lot of processing power. And normally those are not um, for entry level developers their first job unless you're gonna be a junior developer in that particular situation. So again, really good language to learn, good market share as far as just if that's what your local job market and you know what that particular use case is. But if you don't have a specific use case, you're just trying to get your feet wet and get started, it wouldn't be the first programming language that I would learn personally. And I find that a lot of people who are not necessarily committed to programming at the beginning, they try to dive into that one first, they typically get burned out depending on their commitment to the programming language. I would say um, there are other languages that have a lower <laughs> uh, threshold when it comes to learning. So just kind of keep that in mind, guys. So at the end of the day, guys, it all depends on your particular situation, your local job market and where you are as a developer. How do you identify this? We talk about this in my seven step guide. Go ahead and sign up for that, guys. Go ahead and get some, get some of those premium courses that's gonna allow you to know what programming language is gonna work for you. C++ may be that programming language for you. Maybe Python, maybe something else. But only until you go through the evaluation of Zip guides, gonna help you guys take your career to the next level. Like, subscribe to the content. If you have any additional questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the um, comment section, guys. Let's start a conversation. And um, I'm gonna put a link to my seven step guide here on the screen. Go, go ahead and click that, sign up for it, it's free. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.